Well, Jim, defeat today, it's a, a rare beast at the moment. You've gone four and beat me four today. What do you put it down to this afternoon? Um, I, I think there's a number of things. Um, some players looked a little bit fatigued. Um, but they will have the same issues. Um, I think um, we didn't change things dramatically in terms of the shape and that. But I, th I just think it was um, decision-making, um, quality, uh, when we made a decision. Um, there was moments where we created opportunities and chances and we didn't take them, um, mm. whereas they were a little bit more efficient. Um, Pitmeyer's probably by their nine. Um, I thought it was... Some of our players probably felt they were good players last year at their level, like the nine, for example, and now we're stepping up and we're seeing players who are far better in the skill set for a position, and uh, it was Pitmeyer's by their nine in terms of... Um, First contacts on the balls, making sure the two wingers got involved. Um, I think he's claiming the hat trick. If that's the case, then the second one did touch him and he was offside. So, yeah. um, <laughs> but the uh, no, no, there, there was loads of stuff. Uh, we worked on certain things in training last week and this week, and we threatened to do it and then we don't do it. I mean, I think the second goal epitomised us. I've been, I'm hoarse from tasking the lads to take the pressure off the ball with throw-ins. And we just throw down the line to Hamill. Next minute's in our net. Yeah. And I just think to myself, why are we not looking for the spare player? Why are we not looking for the open player? Why are we not brave enough to take pressure? Because I go back to the team that I had in 2006, seven, and that we worked on that consistently. We opened the game up, we stretched it. We were brave enough and strong enough. We played through the lines, and we gave good balls to the front players to to feed off, whether that be feet or side, that sliding down the side. And I think. For some reason, I can't get that message across to our players. No matter how much we work on training about switching to play, um, playing our shape and playing through the lines, we seem to not get it. Um, I think one of the things was back in that day, they were young players mm. and they bought into everything you said, tried everything because it was a, a lesson in football on how to become effective and how to control the game and how to keep possession of the ball. I remember in one game when we played... We had 28 throw-ins and we kept possession from 27 of them. Mm. In fact, the other one, they, they, they nearly scored. And I looked today at um, the amount of times we gave the ball away. And, and people say, oh, well, it's not the throw-in, it's a cross, it's not the... You know, I just think to myself that we give the ball away cheaply mm. and we weren't brave enough to play, we weren't brave enough to work it through the lines and pull their free midfielders, the central midfielders, and just kept going through there. And we made them look good players at times. Was there an issue about mental and physical fatigue from the two previous games, the long travelling, the long trips, getting back at half past three in the morning, that kind of thing? Yeah, look, uh, you know, I, I, I felt tired when we come back yeah. and um, I had some bits of work to do outside of football. Um, so I felt tired. Um, so I'm sure that's it. But we talked about it at length as a staff after we had a couple of players sit out, so we didn't know where they were out on Thursday, whether they were actually physically strong enough. Swank didn't train, mm -hmm. Tom Walker didn't train, so, but you want them in the team. Uh, but there's other players who've trained well, and you think, well, they'll give us an aspect that may be a bit more advantageous. Um, I thought Devante could have had, uh, could have had a hat-trick today yeah, in terms of, um, but how many times did we get them down the sides of the centre-backs? Mm -hmm. And then when we tried to play it, we overhit it, underhit it, didn't, didn't play it. And, and these are the things that we worked on the last two weeks. And I'm thinking, again, you go back to Wembley. I mean, we did all bounce throw-ins, short corners. Um, no one went to play in pockets, went to stretch teams. And that's probably years of being full-time with a, a, a bunch of players who buy into everything you're talking about and the reasoning. And once you figure out why you're doing it, you, you do it. And I think that, um, perhaps that's, that's something for us to, to consider. I don't want to train them and tell them they have to do this and they have to do that because it's all about selecting. If a team's aggressive, you've got to play through the lines uh, or over them. And if they're sat off, you need to pull them out a little bit and play through. But the last couple of performances here, uh, Torquay game and other games, we've, we've, we've circulated the ball without any, any understanding about what we're trying to achieve with it. Are we trying to get the second runs? Are we trying to get the full backs out? We just circulate the ball and invariably you get players who just get caught on the ball. And they break. Uh, Torquay epitomised that. And... Uh, like there's a lot of work to do, and um, like I said, I just we've got to work with what we've got, um, and just um, keep 
trying to remind them what works and what's effective, what's, what's players' strengths. Um, and we, we've, we've come a long way with a lot of players. I think they've added a little bit of fitness, a little bit of speed, a little bit of strength. But the tactical side of it and the, the understanding, um, you know, in terms of the, all the different movements and all the different um, receiving skills, uh, I just don't, I don't see where, they've, if they're adding that. And that's where you've got to go as a player. You've got to I look at Pilkington when he came in, raw young lad. But when he started understanding when to be in pockets, when to be out, when to make balls under the, runs under the ball, when to make runs beyond, um, he's not any stronger, quicker, faster or technically better than some of our players. But the kid learned mm. how to play the game and how to, and, and some of our lads don't have not added an awful lot to the game in terms of the tactical side of it, what they're trying to achieve by the movement. Are you relieved now you've got a, a week to work with them, a blank week ahead? I'm not relieved. I'm, I'm really disappointed. I'm, uh, I'm, look, uh, we we always we, we had a situation last year where um, we had some fantastic rugby games, and then there was a knock on effect. And, and we don't have the squad to be able to just churn over um, certain key players. Maybe yeah, you needed to change, and we had a we had a bit more depth. We had like some Jamie Stotts. You could rotate the centre half. You could rotate the midfielders. Um, but um, we are where we are, and, and, and unfortunately, like I said, that the. the if we take better care of the ball and rest with the ball and work the opposition more, then we might feel that we'll have more range. But if we keep giving the ball away and, and then have to fight to get it back, mm. chase to get it back, then we're going to find fatigue in those games. And, that, and that's the, the mentality of the players in terms of, like, I'm tired, but I'm going to play the game really well so that I don't have to waste my energy chasing balls that I've given away too easily. You did have some impact off the bench, though, today, didn't you? You'd be pleased about that. Um, yeah, well... <laughs> I think Frank got his goal, but like if he if he looks at his overall game, I don't I don't know how many first contacts, how many times he got a hold of the ball, but yeah, it's nice for him to get his goal. Um, ben Jackson, yeah. great extension. I wanted to to be try and be brave and get Tom Walker as a, a left back and bomb on, um, but he he was struggling really with the, the demands of that. So Ben Jackson come on, and then like Ben. He's taking stuff off the training ground. I mean, you've seen it the other night at Bromley. He's burst up the line. He's got the crosses in early. Niall Bell, if he ever buys into what we're talking about, getting to the near post and getting first contact, he'll score goals. Uh, Jason Oswell came here from, I don't think he scored many goals near post on the deck. Got 12 here in that season. And Jason Oswell went away from here learning one thing that got him a very effective player. And then I've been working with Niall for 18 months and, not there, and yeah. you can see the two opportunities we had today. Where if we get first contact, and Vandy did great yeah. to try and get first contact, Frank picked up the pieces. Um, Adam Hamill, I'm not sure, um, but like I said, we got we got we got skill. I mean, but today I could have used all of the subs, um, you know, for different reasons, and and make people understand. And it's just difficult because you want to trust in a team that's got you reasonable, solid results yeah. uh, without changing it. Because if I made five or six changes, everybody would be criticising me. Um, but ultimately that little edge was gone off us. As soon as the goal went in, we've got people behind me, mm, gunning this, gunning that, and yet they were clapping people, kicking balls over the bar, they were clapping free kicks that went straight into the keeper's hand, that they kicked down the other end and scored from, they're clapping those things, and I think I don't. Um, that's where the difference, when Elliot breaks through a Brom yeah. Bromley, smashes on target, breaks through today and it goes wide, and that's the... The ability to play under your own fatigue or under your own pressure. Yeah, fantastic. All right, listen, thanks for your time. Really appreciate it. Cheers, Jack.